It's quite loud in here. Sorry, we'll, we'll go back outside in a minute, but for my next magic trick, I'm gonna make the equipment and all these racks disappear. This is what I wanted to show you. This is the kind of consolidation that is enabled by 128 cores in 2U. Most IT organizations, most people that have servers, are not on the bleeding edge. They've got a lot of systems. We've got PowerEdge 710, 720, Cisco UCS M4. I mean, this is everything from Supermicro, Dell, Cisco, and HP. And we've already removed a lot of systems. I mean, the first rack, this is an older net shelter rack. All of the systems in here have already been consolidated and we're not even at half capacity on just one 128 core machine. We're using VMware as the hypervisor, but you could just as easily do this with Proxmox. But you really can consolidate all of these older servers into just a couple of uh, 128 core monsters. And that's what we're using the Gigabyte chassis for. So here we are at the loading dock with equipment ready to go out. We've got our <laughs> TL2000 tape drive that probably should have been retired a long time ago, and a whole bunch more Cisco servers. Now the ones on top, they're older DDR3, but we've got the 1U DDR4 stuff on the bottom. And you know, some of these have 72 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of RAM. But when you're consolidating all of these into virtual machines, I mean, the operating systems are also Windows and Linux typically. Uh, even things like SQL Server, which normally it's like, oh, let's put that on bare metal. No, these new servers are so fast with the NVMe storage, plus spinning rust, plus the caching, plus things in VMware like vSAN. All this can go. The uh, <laughs> Just using 32 cores in VMware, we're already 25% faster than all of these machines combined. It's just completely insane. It's not just the clock speed. It's not just clock for clock on modern hardware. It's clock for clock on older hardware because you know businesses want to squeeze every last ounce of value out of equipment they can. And at this point, these things aren't worth the electricity it takes to run them. This world record breaker. 128 cores, 256 threads, four terabytes of memory. Yes, this is an AMD Epic Rome server. We gotta put it together, some assembly required, a little bit DIY, a little bit Ikea, if you will. This is the Gigabyte R282 Z93. Look at this, look at this just raw, unadulterated horsepower. This is incredible, an incredible, incredible machine. Let's uh, see what it's got under the hood. 64 cores, 128 threads each. 128 PCIe lanes each, but most of the PCIe lane, well, half the PCIe lanes, and these are the two CPUs, are used for inter-CPU communication. 64 CPUs means the Windows doesn't know what to do. Each CPU is gonna be two NUMA nodes. It's gonna be two near NUMA nodes, and then the other CPU is gonna be a far NUMA node. Well, two far NUMA nodes, which actually works pretty well in Windows. That's pretty similar to the topology that has been most debugged on Windows. Theoretically, Windows supports all topologies, but as we learned from the Threader for 2990, Microsoft can't be bothered to put a lot of work into anything that's slightly outside the norm of CPU topologies. These CPUs take that into account. They're really well designed. They work perfectly. Windows, Linux, doesn't matter. Of course, on Linux, these things absolutely shred, as we've seen from our benchmarks and other stuff, but we gotta actually put 64 cores to the test in this chassis. My goodness, what a beautiful chassis. Now, the R282Z93, as configured, it has 12 three and a half inch SATA drives. So this is all about your bulk storage. And it's also available in, you know, if you want full frontal NVMe, 24 NVMe bays, no problem. If you're still mixed, you know, legacy SAS and NVMe flash or something like that, you can have mixed NVMe and SAS flash for the front as well. The backplane that we're working with in this particular model is SATA only. So if you wanted to upgrade to SAS, the, the you know, U.2 connectors uh, for that are not present on this particular backplane. So this thing is designed for you know, those 10, 20 terabyte, three and a half inch mechanical drives. And you've got one M.2 here. You can of course break out your X16 slots into four M.2 uh, connections. So if you wanted to use M.2 storage, that's fine. Or PCI Express flash add-in cards. You know, they make the 15 terabyte add-in flash cards that are PCI Express. 
This thing's got nine physical slots, although in this configuration, it's really set up for a GPU type workload. So you can have three dual height GPUs, comes with your power cables, your breakout cables. This is the six plus two SATA power connection as opposed, as opposed to the eight pin power connection. If you're running something like the Tesla V100, you can get a different cable or the V100s come with an adapter for the EPS 12 volt. Either one, this chassis will support. You can specify what you need from your, your vendor, your OEM that you're working with. But if you get a bare bones system like this, it's really not too hard to you know, DIY and put it together. A lot of people are all about the, uh, the four hour, you know, incident response, like the four hour support. You just have to order from a good reseller or work with a good partner that's going to support the hardware like that. <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this one before. The IT manager or the senior developer or whoever, you're sort of connecting to and remoting into and managing or developing on 10 year old hardware. Maybe it's Sandy Bridge, maybe it's even older, maybe it's like a Nihilum, maybe it's a Xeon box that has been there a while, was installed by somebody that left the company like three years ago, and everybody's not really sure what's going on. Does it have all its patches? Is it updating itself? I don't know, every now and again we have to reboot it. AMD Epic is changing the game with regard to consolidation and putting all these machines together. Now you might be thinking that's crazy because you get all that equipment in a server or in a rack, you know, all those different individual servers and the reliability of that should be pretty good because, you know, only like if something fails, even if something fails catastrophically, it's just going to be the one server that fails. But when you've got an entire rack of equipment, all of that electricity usage and everything else versus consolidation down to a single 2U server, is that even possible? Yeah, I've done it now. I've actually done it a fair bit. You can consolidate all of those old machines down into a single Epic 7742 dual processor server. 128 cores, 256 threads, you know, up to eight terabytes of memory, although that'll get a little pricey. You don't really need that much. You can always upgrade into it. This is the new box that's gonna replace Bob's box. Let's actually document it this time. And you can run both of those in parallel with basically no performance penalty because you've got so much computational horsepower at your disposal. I mean, 256 threads and oversubscribing that, AMD's got a ton of hardware in these new Epic Rome CPUs to be able to oversubscribe those virtual machines. So I can't, it's, it's difficult for me to come up with words to explain to you how much of a game changer this is in the enterprise, but now at this point, with our memory and processors installed, before we install any add-in peripherals like the Tesla V100s, we need to do a power on test and make sure that it, that it works. So you need to grab a monitor and keyboard and mouse, basically get this thing set up, plug it in, turn it on, see what happens. We're at the workbench now, where I have to yell and the microphone sounds terrible. So we're gonna switch into voiceover mode. It works really well. It uses the shadow copy mechanism to create a disk snapshot of a running system. So you can run that, create a VHD, and then you can convert the VHD to whatever you need, you know, VMware or, or Hyper-V or Proxmox or a mix of whatever it is that you're running. And then you, that physical machine becomes a virtual machine. That is a really handy tool. In terms of Linux migration, Linux is super portable and super easy. You can convert your Linux installation from a physical machine to a virtual machine or a virtual machine to a physical machine or move containers around or convert from the old Proxmox containers to the new Proxmox containers. Fairly, you know, the LXC stuff, LXC, LXDX, that's just, it's usually not super hard. You just move one thing at a time. And uh, even if you're, virtual machines are unruly in terms of like how big they are and how much data they are. Uh, that's maybe a, a cleanup opportunity. You can mount some NFS shares or create some network file systems or create some iSCSI targets and migrate your data and sort of get control of your infrastructure at the same time. Do you know how much Amazon, like if you're, if you're getting EC2 space for this, uh, 77, this dual 7742, this dual AMD Epic server, you're going to be spending five, $6,000 a month for the equivalent horsepower of this machine. But you're probably gonna spend less than $40,000 on a server like this. And you know, with the, the processors, the memory, the storage, the whole nine yards. In fact, it may even be less than that. And if you, if you drop down from the 64 core monster CPUs, you're gonna, you know, not have as good a density, but you can save a ton of money on the cost of the machine overall. And you can get it right now. There's not really, 
there's not really too much of an availability problem with the AMD Epic CPUs because AMD is selling a ton of them and they're making a ton of them. And the chiplet production, at least as far as AMD Epic CPUs, seems to be pretty good. So I've just, hopefully I've given, given you some ideas. Big thanks to Gigabyte for loaning me this server so I could show you in this video what we were doing, you know, sort of in the data center. And this is something that you should take on. This is not something that you should, you should be afraid of. These are, these are the projects that your company needs you to do because nobody else is going to do it. And it's going to turn into a big mess later when one of those servers in the rack randomly dies. You don't even know which one it is because no one has logged into it in five years. It just needs to be on doing its thing and no one thinking about it. And if you want it to continue to be on doing its thing with no one thinking about it, you need to convert it into modern hardware and deploy it on Epic because it looks like these Epic chassis and this Epic ecosystem is gonna be around for a while. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you want some how-tos on like how to do stuff, something specifically with your server, let me know. There's a full suite of benchmarks in the description. Everything from scientific applications, things like Gromax, to things like PHP, web servers, stuff like that. And some of these benchmarks are just running on a single thread. So something like PHP, which is really super context dependent, that's a single thread benchmark. So you're really just testing, you know, how it's going to run in the context of, of that PHP process, not how good the server is overall. So if you get like that 7402P, the performance is not gonna be a lot different than the 7742, because the clock speeds are roughly the same, except that you've got 24 cores versus 64 cores. So you'll get that scaling because PHP scales linearly. It's like Cinebench, but it's the server version of Cinebench. It just depends on what the benchmark is. Whereas Gromax will just use all of the computational horsepower that you have available, assuming that you've got open MPI set up. And so that is a whole machine benchmark. I wish that, um, uh, we use the Ferronics test suite. I wish that it had more of a distinction between a, this will, this benchmark will scale with the number of cores that you have. And this is more of like a context switching benchmark. So the more cores you have, the, uh, the better the result from this benchmark it will be. But this benchmark is really just testing a, something that's single thread or lightly threaded. Technically the PHP benchmark is a couple of threads because you've got the Apache process and then the, the PHP handoff. And so if you wanna be like super pedantic about it, it's not just what fits on a single thread, but it does scale pretty linearly with the number of cores that you have. I digress. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you want a how-to on how to do something with a 128 core monster server, because that server, not it's not that it should be doing double duty, it should be doing like quintuple duty or even beyond that, because it is a ridiculous amount of horsepower in 2U. And you can even get higher density solutions. You can get four 2U nodes in a 2U server if you really want density, but you're gonna give up storage and memory channels and some other things like that, connectivity. I like having all the, I like having all the PCI Express expansion available physically in the chassis. So I think, I think a 2U server like this is, is just about right. Probably the NVMe configuration instead of the three and a half inch configuration that we saw in the video, like one of our earlier chassis configurations. But uh, yeah, the 128 core CPU is a monster in a way that is, is difficult to explain, but hopefully I showed you what it enables so that you have a better understanding.